Remember Argyle Summerfield, the old movie star? 83, according to this. And he's just had a baby with his nurse. 83? At that age, you're usually considered sprightly if you can go to the toilet and remember to take off your pants. <laughs> Don't mind anything else. 34 she is. Gorgeous. It was love at first sight she cooed. Yeah, lemonade in a really large scotch. <laughs> Don't worry, Davy. Me, Peterson and Selbs, we'll stick by your son. It's situations like these when you find out who your real mates are. We'll stick by you, lad. Yeah, your old drinking buddies. We'll be there for you, fighting your side through thick and thin, rain or shine. Obviously, so long as it doesn't clash with our drinking commitments. <laughs> Come on, boys. Let's find Davy the best damn lawyer money can buy. Jen, bar's just opened. Terrible piece of poor luck for Davy. <laughs> These rounds is it? I hate this firefighting noise. Terribly posh to Left, right, left, right! At ease. Space. Nobody knows. It's going to go down in history as one of the great mysteries to rank alongside the Marie Celeste and the popularity of broccoli. wanted to see me. It's such a great honor to be here in your office, sir. Wait till I tell my grandchildren. <laughs> I actually stood on the very carpet you yourself actually use for standing on. <laughs> Take your nose out of my butt and get to the point. <laughs> yes, sir. Right away, sir. Get into the point immediately, sir. Appreciate how busy you are. Not gonna waste any more of your valuable time by not getting to the point, sir. Immediately, sir. Wimmer! <laughs> Sorry, sir. I get a bit nervous when I'm on the command deck. It's all the power. Makes me light-headed, sir. So, why are you here? I know I'm only a lowly vending machine operative, sir, and it's not my area, sir, but I'm concerned at some of the onboard safety procedures, sir. There's a potentially lethal scenario concerning drive plates. If one of these plates is misrepaired, it could cause a radiation leak that could wipe out the entire crew. Obviously, anyone who misrepaired one of these plates would have to have a brain the size of a leprechaun's testicle. <laughs> but nevertheless, like German tourists, sir, the stupid are everywhere. <laughs> I propose the following new safety measures. Well, this is very astute, Rimmer. Did you really think of this? Also, sir, I believe we can fix Holly's damaged CPU bank by typing in the following splitter code. Allow me, sir. Uh, if it was that simple, I think the computer guys would, uh... Thanks, Arnold. I'm now fully restored with a working IQ of 6,000. I'd better get back to my duties. Permission to look smug, sir. <laughs> Good work, Rimmer. Great work. I'm just happy to serve, sir. Before I go, sir, Happy wedding anniversary, sir. <laughs> you must be missing her terribly. A tangerine sponge cake? Just like Martha used to make. Well, I, uh... uh thank you. Uh, thank you, Rimmer. Uh, dismissed. One last thing, sir. I know the medical guys think we've run out of this stuff, but I came across a couple of unopened medicrates in storage. If this is useful to you in any way, it's yours. No questions asked. Anus Soothe Pile Cream. <laughs> An easy to apply cream that comes with its own special glove. <laughs> I can tell from your walk. 
Appreciate it, River. <laughs> Dismissed. It's an honor and a delight to serve, sir. Anything I can do, I'm here for you, sir. Oh, uh, could you seal this for me and post it? Certainly, sir. Just having a little supper for some of the guys I've marked out for greater things. See you Friday, Arnie. See you Friday, Frank. <laughs> Sir. What's the saying? If you've got nothing to swing, you can't be with Bing. <laughs> I can't believe it. I used to be Crichton. Now I'm Kristen. <laughs> I sound like the title of an Ed Wood movie. Well, what happened? Did you lose it? You mean you've never had a steak pie, peas and chips, then? Uh, I think the phrase is meat and two veg, ma'am. Well, I knew it was some meal that had loads of calories. No, the only mechanoids that were ever issued with genitals were the ones created to work on Italian starships. <laughs> felt they could acclimatize themselves better if they could mimic their Italian crewmates and stand around cupping themselves all day. <laughs> hey, now you're a woman, it's going to mean some big changes in the way you behave. In what way? Well, for a start, you're going to have to be selfless, uh, overprotective, never stop working, and constantly complain about guys' poor aim round the toilet bowl. <laughs> Wait! Maybe you're a woman already. <laughs> I'm not going to be a woman for long, ma'am. Just overnight. The captain's actually beginning to admire me. He doesn't look at me anymore like he's just eaten bad oysters. <laughs> he's even invited me to supper with the movers and the shakers. So what about the override code for this, then? Too soon. I'm not an officer yet. The trial starts tomorrow, man. And without the nanobots, our defence is about as watertight as a super saver economy cabin on the Titanic. <laughs> Look, once you guys have legged it, where does that leave me? I'm not helping you escape and losing all my insider knowledge. Hey, no escape -o. No more info. I went through Starbucks Salvage this afternoon and found this. Rimmer's diary. I also found these. Oh, look, virus. Sexual magnetism. <laughs> They're just aftershaves. I wouldn't use them. I think they've gone off. I know what they are, Listy. I've read the diary. I know they're positive viruses. Take this, and it gives you sexual magnetism. Take this, and it gives you luck. Yeah, until your natural body defences combat them, yeah? Sexual magnetism. <laughs> this could totally solve my whole problem with the universe. What, are you going to use them? Is Paris a kind of plaster? <laughs> I bet I am. You had no right going through my things, Rimmer. And it is morally inexcusable to use a sexual magnetism virus that I was saving to use on Chrissy the next time I got a drunk. <laughs> well, bottoms up, then bottoms down, and hopefully bottoms up again. <laughs> ah. <laughs> you left some of your luck behind, man. I touched the tube. Look. You are guilty, guys. Who are you fooling? I don't know why I said that. <laughs> He's right. We are definitely guilty. I'm a reject from a mutant lab who's bumming his way across the universe. <laughs> Thanks to you guys, I got to stow away on Red Dwarfs. What am I saying? <laughs> For me, Lister's nanobot story is corroborated. They were trying to track him down. 
Their actions in the psychotropically induced scenario bear that out. I thought social workers were supposed to be nice. Yeah, so did I. I also thought they were supposed to wear corduroy jackets and drive Volvos. <laughs> this one didn't. I don't reckon he was fully qualified. In the end, I was so shell-shocked, I went to see the priest and explained everything. You should have seen the nuns. What? And get garroted by Sister Les and her stupid smegging rosary beads? <laughs> it's cos we're in G-Tower. All the staff are mad here. He said it was impossible. Well, he's bound to say that. He was the warden. <laughs> Get some food inside you. Supper's in a minute. You'll feel better then. Yes. I wonder what appetising morsel is on the menu tonight. Fricasseed elephant dung, maybe? <laughs> rat's ears pan-fried in garlic? I doubt if it's rat's ears. We had that last night. <laughs> if only I'd hired a smarter lawyer instead of the brain-dead, pompous, stupid-haired git I ended up with. You defended yourself. <laughs> Yes, and I don't need reminding of that, thank you very much. <sighs> there are certain things I excel at, but defending myself at a board of inquiry is not one of them. I don't think calling the captain your holding has helped. <laughs> Came across as a bit licky, especially all that genuflecting. I led a blameless life until I met you. The worst crime I ever committed was handing in my geography homework late. And now this. Two years in the tank. Two years. Oh, God, that's so embarrassing. <laughs> I was like a wild animal ready to rip off his clothes and ravish his body. That is absolutely the last time I ever take your advice, ever. <laughs> what now, Hull? I do a damn fine moon impression. <laughs> I've got some brilliant books on ponies. I'm so gorgeous, there's a six-month waiting list for birds to suddenly appear every time I'm near. <laughs> Look, there's nothing for you here. But what are you offering? Apart from the opportunity to watch you idle away every evening, tiddly-winking your verrucas into a pair of old boots. Oh. You used to do that? No, I didn't. Tiddly-wink me verrucas into old boots. It's impossible. I always used to miss. <laughs> I can't leave. I've got too much going for me here. What about my friends? What friends? You mean the polyester brothers? Those guys you play war games with every Thursday night. Whenever those guys get together, they issue a dandruff warning on the news. Now you've been resurrected by the Nanos, you've got a second chance. An opportunity to live your life afresh. Forget it! He's not gonna change his mind. We got more chance of persuading a dentist to hang around an x-ray machine. He's right. Time is of the essence. The crew will know we're out of AR now and they're probably sending someone to investigate. What did he do? I don't know, really. <laughs> he, um... He, um... He was, um... Um... <laughs> Head of safety. Head of safety? That's a hell of a title. What did he do? He's in! Let's celebrate! I'll crack open a bottle of cyanide! <laughs> One proviso, though. No more double dealing. You with us? It's a weasel-free zone. I give you my word. Uh, does it have to be your word, sir? <laughs> we prefer someone else's. And as insurance, I'll have the viruses. So what now? I think the new head of safety has a contribution to make here. Oh, fire away, sir. Crichton's right. They'll know we're out of AR, and there's probably a crack battalion on its way now with orders to hunt us down and shoot on sight. <gasps> What's your advice, sir? Well, my advice in this situation is we should run like the wind. <laughs> Follow the head of safety. <laughs> Just do another smeg and dance. Let's get the hell out of here. <laughs> sure, this time, make it shorter. Dance? With her, I'd have trouble walking. <laughs> Powering up. Give me a chance. It's only Monday. <laughs> Anything else? 
The only other way to get out is to convince them that you're insane. Trouble is, according to prison regs, anyone who is insane wouldn't want to be released. So anyone who claims they're insane to get out must be sane and therefore not eligible for release. It's a classic Catch-44 situation. <laughs> Catch-22? No, no. It's twice as bad as that. <laughs> I'm not wearing you in the shower anymore. I'm not sure you're waterproof. <laughs> How did I wind up in the brig with common criminals? Me, somewhat of my upbringing and education. I bet I'm the only person here who knows how to spell symposium. Yeah, but a skill like that's bound to come in dead handy round here. <laughs> when the psycho droids from G-Wing corn you in the laundry room, you can say, fellas, I think I should warn you, I know how to spell symposium. <laughs> I want a smegging mile. No way, no way am I becoming a canary. Too late, sweetie pie. There's your ID badge and uniform. No way! No way! I'm just going to say you forged my signature. You should see what you get, though. Leisure facilities, gourmet food, and best of all, get this, get this. Conjugal visiting rights. Conjugal visiting rights. They've got this room with a bed, and you request conjugal visiting rights, and Bob's your smeggin' uncle. <laughs> Are you under the impression, you dozy wazzock, <laughs> that you request conjugal visiting rights, and they fix you up with someone to bonk? <laughs> of course they do. Why else would they call it conjugal visiting rights? You've got to provide your own partner, though. <laughs> have you? <laughs> oh, but Holly said... Of course you have, you dweebo. No, no, no. I mean, that's part of the incentive, that is. Of course it is. I mean, if there's to provide your own partner, where's the bonus part in that? The bonus part is that they're letting you have sex with someone while you're in the tank. What? That's the bonus part? Just that bit? <laughs> They've really got it in for us, haven't they? Conjugal rights. I'm surprised you didn't think it was a room where the cons go and juggle in. <laughs> it's all beginning to make sense now. I wondered why the guards sniggered when I asked them to put me down for twin sisters and a party pizza. <laughs> oh, God. Pepperoni flavoured. <laughs> wasn't being fussy. But how does it work? The future's not happened yet. Although you do. Smeg. <laughs> Crichton, time to make your time bends speech. Uh, time bends? Uh, we experience the space-time continuum along the full length of its curve, while Cassandra must be able to compute the result of cutting the corner. Right. Let's ask her a question about the future. A biggie. Come on, though. Taking someone's bra off with me tea phase 181. <laughs> That's a hell of a sexy way to go. Uh, so long as the teeth are in your mouth at the time, sir. <laughs> You're holding your teeth in your right hand at the time. It isn't quite so sexy. I'm really screwed up now. And who wants to know that? No, I die. It's completely spoiled a surprise. 181? What are you complaining about? Well, say Cassandra has said next week. I oh, know, I'm pretty disappointed myself. <laughs> All right, you've had this coming. Cassandra, how does he die? Cassandra, don't answer that. I would never divulge someone's future if they genuinely had no desire to hear it. OK, here's a question about me. How old am I when I go to his funeral? <laughs> don't answer that. Don't answer anything about... Sorry to interrupt Arnold, but Blood Drinker is about to come in and tell you he's got some news about the hull. I've got some news about the hull. Oh, really? Craft started shipping water 18 floors up. We've got two hours before it's a problem. Gonna get Mr. Knott to board and inspect while there's still time. Crichton, this is where you share your theory with your crewmates. What I wouldn't give to have your weasel gene, sir. <laughs> yeah, permission to leave the room before you utter your next sentence, sir. Permission refused. <laughs> oh, no, sir, not me! <laughs> Perfect. A mechanoid. You're like paper panties, disposable. <laughs> what about our relationship? After everything we've been through, surely you have some feelings of warmth and affection for me? I've only known you a week. I don't give a stuff. <laughs> of course. He hardly knows me. Me and you both. 
Hang on, hang on. During the Cassandra meeting, you referred to Crichton as Crichton several times. <sighs> Therefore, Cassandra knows I'm Crichton, and consequently, I cannot be Rimmer. <laughs> You'll have to find some other poor sap to set up. <laughs> <laughs> now, wait a minute. Bravo, Crity. I have to take the old boater off to you in this one. Chris, can you just press a bit harder? Don't be afraid to really jam your chest into me. <laughs> After all, this is my life we're protecting. 100% effort. <laughs> Dive and Bell, we've made it. <laughs> <laughs> Two would have done. Look, I'm going to sort out the rest of it now. I'll, um... <laughs> I'll see you two lovebirds later. <laughs> right. Where were we? You were about to start moaning. Yes, I was, wasn't I? Mm -hmm, because I'm leaving. Oh, come on. That's so unfair. I mean, you're so gorgeous just once. I felt sorry for you. You conned me into this. You say that like it's a bad thing. Yeah, see ya. <laughs> Look, thanks for being with me tonight. What happens in the future is up to me, not some predetermined destiny smeg. I'll see you, kiddie. If I wanted to share a cell with an irritating lump of wood, I'd have moved in with an Australian soap star. <laughs> Your guitar is responsible for some of the most revolting noises ever heard. I'd rather listen to Baxter first thing in the morning, coughing up lumps of sputum the size of small planets. Have you got a problem with me and my guitar, Rim? It's not just me. Even your goldfish wince. <laughs> Haven't you noticed how they cower under plants when you start to tune up? <laughs> I thought it was that bad. Didn't you get a clue that time I tried to insert it in you? <laughs> I think they were thinking of me. <laughs> Maybe my luck's changing. At last, a break. Oh, by the way, you've both been commissioned to clean out the sewers. Either that, or you go on a suicide mission. See what I mean? Lucky, lucky, lucky. <laughs> suicide mission, please. Yeah, make that two suicides. <laughs> I forgot. For you. All right. Who are you? <laughs> and what have you done with our Rimmer? <laughs> Let me get this straight. A hidden camera filming the girl shower night, and you're voting no to the soapy bosom party? <laughs> Dreadful idea. I did just mention these girls will be naked and soapy. <laughs> Not forgetting Sophie, but especially remembering Naked. <laughs> I understand the concept. Do you understand the meaning of the words Naked and Sophie, though? This is crucial to my point. <laughs> Gentlemen, allow me to clarify my position. I'm going to make this quick and easy. Last night, on D-Wing, I was beaten up and mugged. <laughs> that was good of him to tell us. I need a lift. When I came round, I discovered something of great sentimental value had been taken from me. Probably his gonad electrocution kit. <laughs> Whoever's responsible, take one step forward. 
Mm. You have one chance. I'm going to turn the lights off for precisely ten seconds, during which I want whoever took it to return <laughs> my glass eye. <laughs> Kill the lights. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six. <laughs> lights. I'm glad to see good sense prevail. <laughs> Who's responsible? It was Simmons, sir. <laughs> was it you, Simmons? No, sir, it wasn't me, sir. Someone took them out of my mouth when I wasn't looking, sir. I have a date with Miss Patricia Carling from Supplies on Saturday night. She thinks my eyes are my loveliest feature. If I go like this, I'm only half lovely! <laughs> If it's not returned within 30 seconds, all canary privileges suspended. One month. No privileges. That means four weeks of miserable freezing conditions, no entertainment, and lousy, lukewarm food. It would be like going on holiday to the Isle of Man. <laughs> sir! Yes, Rimmer. I know who stole your left peeper, sir. It was him, sir. I saw him playing marbles with it this morning, sir. <laughs> Thank you, Rimmer. Your action has been noted. Thank you, sir. <laughs> Dismissed. <laughs> Have you gone that? You don't rat on other inmates. It's an unwritten law. It has to be unwritten in here because no one can read. <laughs> Look, if it helps the appeal, what else matters? Model prisoners? You're done me, but from now on, everyone's going to be after you. What, for ratting on Sado? He had no mates. He was a loner, friendless and pathetic. <laughs> That was Chummy, his much-loved twin brother. It's so hard telling them apart. <clears throat>
Anyway, stop picking on me. I scored all our points. Oh, oh, that last one didn't count. There was a melee and you scored with my head. It went in, didn't it? Oh, look, this isn't getting us anywhere. Oh, I'm just so desperate to win, sir. We beat the other inmates, get to the final, the chance to play against the guards. For the sake of the other prisoners, we can't let them down. Look at them. <laughs> Their morale depends upon it. In some cases, their sanity depends on it. <laughs> We've got to remember how we got to the final. Recapture the winning formula. How did we do it? Cheating, bribery, and on one occasion, chloroforming the opposition's defense. <laughs> We're way ahead of you. We've got it all taken care of. As soon as the guards swigged their half-time juice. I stopped the lift doors from closing. I wasn't even catching a lift. I got the shuttle to the all-night hospital. I had to pay two fares. <laughs> Where'd you get it? The Medilab? First thing tomorrow, you're on spud duty for two weeks. Now get out of my sight, both of you. Not spud duty. Not with my athlete's hand. <laughs> out. <laughs> what about the poppadoms? You didn't forget them, did you? Cigar? <laughs> Lady Chatterley's lover. It's good, is it? You ready? All right. Here's a little something for you. <laughs> it can rip. Early screw. Look what happened to me. Do I look? <laughs> look like some kind of me. Age of Pratt or what? <laughs> what is it? It appears to be able to digitize time and then download it and store it on a hard drive. That's why they don't appear to be actually doing anything. <laughs> So, this device has the ability to make time come to a complete stop. Sounds like one of Goalpost Ted's anecdotes. <laughs> what else can it do? Now it's regressed your outfits to a previous time in your lives. And you still look like the Turkish entry in the Eurovision Song Contest. <laughs> you used to wear that. <laughs> <laughs> hey, before saying stuff about me, take a look in the mirror. You look like Lady Godiva let loose in an Oxfam shop. <laughs> I'll try again. So, here's the question. Can you unfreeze these guys, but take them back in time so they have no memory of finding this? I think so, ma'am. Why? If we can smuggle this thing back on Red Dwarf, it can make our prison terms pass in seconds. Plus, we could save a fortune in laundry bills. <laughs> Leave this to me. I have an excellent place to conceal it. Oh, does this thing wear off? <laughs> well, <laughs> it wasn't me, so it was him. He made me do it. Oh, Judas, I thought we'd agreed to refuse to talk. Just let me blame you first, then I'll refuse to talk. <laughs> As Julius Caesar said when he collapsed on the stairs of the Senate, after smelling Mark Antony's aftershave, A2 Brute. <laughs> As you can see, sir, he's not an educated man and he's led me astray. If I ever, ever see you in this office again, then you're in the hole. Two months. Two months stuck in here with you. You think if I appeal, they might be compassionate and give me the death sentence instead? <laughs> Look, we're going to be fine. How are we going to pass the time? By talking. For two months? Yeah, we'll take turns choosing a subject and give talks to one another about themes and topics we're interested in. Oh, great. I'm going to become an expert in how to play the rock classics with a kazoo lodged between my buttocks. <laughs> Hello. Hey, there's someone in here with us.
Hey. You spill my soup. Sorry, bud. I tell you what. Let's strike a deal. I'll give you my soup and you let me live. What do you say? <laughs> it's my lunch. I said, bon appetit, enjoy my meal. <laughs> Excuse me? I lost my lunch. Yeah, there's the prawns. No one could keep the food down today. <laughs> no, no, his meal was stolen by that bicep with eyebrows. Too bad. Now move on. You're holding up the line. Wand. Go on, fix him. Chicken cross the plate. <laughs> Thanks, bud. <laughs> Let's eat. Well, what's for lunch? Uh, chicken, potatoes, carrots. Why? Watch this. <laughs> Nothing. They just told me a joke. What joke? Why did the chicken cross the plate? <laughs> this is quite some machine. <laughs> what goes around comes around. We, we don't want any grub. I have some grub, man. Mutual respect, yeah? <laughs> hey, I tell you what, hand over the food and I'll burp you. <laughs> well, what do you say, dummy? <laughs> Food-wise, sir, I think we can do rather better. Allow me to illustrate. However, in the guitar solo from Stairway to Heaven, two kazoos should be used to recreate Jimmy Page's double-headed guitar work, so extra clenching is required. <laughs> What's this? <laughs> Bob to the rescue. Come on. No, I'm not going. Why not? Because we'll get caught. And if we get caught escaping from the hole, we're finished. Please yourself. No, I'm not moving. I'm staying here. I'm going to be a good boy. <laughs> I think I might tidy up the cell, write a nice poem about Captain Hollister. There was a fine captain called Hollister who... <laughs> oh, snag. <laughs> What 
What's happened here? These guys are frozen. No, he not. He blinked. <laughs> <laughs> this will drive them crazy. <laughs> this is Denton, Yvonne Magruder's new boyfriend, Mr. Spoothy. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> <laughs> Not so smooth now, eh? No. <laughs> Correct me if I'm wrong, but that is not a sparrow. <laughs> it's a Tyrannosaurus Rex, sir. Thought so. Different plumage from the sparrow. It's a real giveaway. Where the hell did Barney's ugly brother come from? Uh, from Pete, sir. Birds are descended from dinosaurs, uh, from the theropod family. I inadvertently reversed evolution several million years. If only this thing came with a manual. <laughs> Have a good night to complain to the makers. Oh, oh, Bob! Put him down! Put him down, Pete! <laughs> Come on, try it, hurry up! This is not good, Crichton. No, Listy, you're being too hard on him. I'm sure Captain Hollister will see the funny side of this, no trouble. We escaped from the hole and turned a sparrow into the most dangerous predator in history. <laughs> Who could fail to be amused by that tiny infringement of Space Corps protocol? We're finished! <laughs> We've got to keep this dinosaur business quiet or we're dead. Keep him quiet? <laughs> He's rampaging about the food decks, making more noise than two yodelling champions on honeymoon. <laughs> Everyone on the ship will have heard him by now. But, sir, the crew are frozen, operating on a different time stream. Now, if we can recapture the time wand and turn Pete back into a sparrow before the freeze expires, no one need be any the wiser. He's right. I just listened to everything he said, and I still ain't got a clue what's happening. <laughs> I'm the guy who wears T-shirts in the middle of winter and his nipples don't even get hard. <laughs> a seven-ton theropod is not going to eat Indian food. An Indian waiter, no problem. <laughs> Indian food, forget it. They like flesh, preferably living. I'll scoff at myself. <laughs> no, Rimmer's right. He's not right, and this is not your area. Uh, are you saying I'm not smart? At certain times, you're very smart. And if our current problem was, how do we navigate our way out of a star cluster? Or what shade of green wellies should we wear to a Jim Corner? You'd be in charge. <laughs> but it's not. It's how do you give a dinosaur the gallops? <laughs> Who are you going to call? Dave Lister. Oh, well, we're dealing with an expert here. All of a sudden, he's a curryographer. That door's not going to hold out much longer. Stuff in, you're gonna spoil the taste. <laughs> Here comes Pete.
The rule on T-Rexes aboard JMC mining ships is very clear. They're just not allowed. Look, it says so here, no pets. Am I right? Yes, sir, the JMC is very clear about that, sir. No cats, no hamsters, and definitely no seven-ton carnivores, sir. We're trying to help a little old man get his beloved little sparrow back, sir. But that time wand, it's harder to understand than a Russian edition of A Brief History of Time. Have you any idea the damage that beast has caused rampaging around the food decks looking for something to quench its thirst? He says I've got to clean our cell with my tongue. You get punishment duty too? I've got to iron 800 prison smocks. I don't understand. Oh. Why do you get punishment duty and I get a reward? <laughs> Are you sure you know how to work that thing? Definite. Guaranteed. 100% definitely positive. I've studied it. I know what I'm doing. You are holding it upside down, sir. What? Hold it. Now it's back to front, sir. Look, stop bossing me about. I've got it sussed. We are not going in till we know what we're doing. A fist fight with a T-Rex. <laughs> Smegging <and> great. <laughs> you two can't get killed quick enough, can you? I'm gonna make a coat out of his skin, have his feet made into boots. <laughs> Sounds good. Have you thought about a matching satchel? <laughs> can you imagine it? Bush. Bush. I thought you had a glass jaw. Yeah, I have. Yeah, but them two Rexes, mate, they only got little arms, haven't they? <laughs> Ain't got no reach. Yeah, I'll just pick it off. Oh. <laughs> Can't reach anything with them little arms. That's probably why they're always a bit grumpy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, all that frustration. Maybe we could chime it. My lovely dog. <laughs> Sit! Big! Fitch! Huh. Oi! Stop rubbing your ass on that carpet, you dirty beef! <laughs> Can you imagine taking that down the pub? All the birds, mate, they'd be well impressed. <laughs> Might even let me take them out. Might even let me take their brows off. <laughs> they let some blokes do that, you know. Hard blokes. Uh, now where's it going? Archie, come out of there. Can you hear me? Come out of there at once, young man, or you are in very deep trouble indeed. Can you hear me? Right, that's it. No more rude things for a week. It's gone. What? Where? Don't ask. Archie? Are you listening to me, mister? That's it. You are gated until spring. <laughs> yep. This is the captain. How's it going? Uh, very well, sir. Yeah, yeah, really, really, really good. What the hell is that noise? <laughs> going to a tunnel, sir. <laughs> Got him. <laughs> Sorry about that, sir. He's not quite house trained yet. He can play dead and beg, but that's about it. We're never gonna talk about this, okay? This never happened, okay? Okay. He was just looking for somewhere warm to go, sir. He's never heard of a sauna? Located the mainframe. Maybe it can tell us something. Finally, we've got our act together. Doing the smart thing. <laughs> I know what you're thinking, but it's just not possible, is it? I mean, Pete's a bloke, isn't he? 
Well? Oh, Listy. So he's got no blokey equipment, then? Not unless he's hung like a microbe. <laughs> That'll make him a woman, then. A woman dinosaur. A woman dinosaur that lays eggs with baby dinosaurs inside. Which grow into big dinosaurs. And eat me. <laughs> Finished. At last we agree on something. What are we going to do now? Now rebuild the time wand. It's absolutely priceless. Oh. You're about to get your voice back. <laughs> I did knock, sir. Perhaps you didn't hear me. How's your throat, sir? Getting a little easier? <laughs> oh, I'm so pleased to hear that, sir. <laughs> your hot lemon, sir. You think I could become an officer, sir, one day, sir? Thanks for the lemon drink, Rimmer. Uh, that'll be all. You didn't answer my question, sir. <laughs> now you're just faking to avoid answering, aren't you, sir? Uh, oh, look, it gives me no pleasure telling you this, Rimmer, but I'm sorry, you're just not officer material. Not officer material, sir? A leader is there to lead. He's not there for bossing other people around. Isn't he? <laughs> if you want to take my advice, you'll redirect your energies and find something that you have a genuine chance of succeeding at. Like what, sir? <laughs> well, the nanobots must have resurrected you, too. You look... L wonderful. Incredible. Talia used to be my personal fitness trainer back in the old days. See how much I've missed you. <laughs> <laughs> you made captain. You've done so well. Your own ship. Wow. I've got goosebumps. You look sensational. Is there anything else I can get you, sir? Uh, no, Rimmer. That'll be all. The photograph of your wife, sir. Is it okay where it is, or should I turn it so it's facing the wall? <laughs> so it must have been the escape pod. The one Talia What's-Her-Name arrived on. We've got to go back and tell them. What about our escape? What about Baxter? What about my breakfast rolls? <laughs> but it could be days before they discover this. If we go back now, they've got a chance to work on an antidote. You're just acting all brave and manly to impress her, aren't you? No, Dave's right. He's looking at the big picture. Yeah, and the big picture involves you, no clothes, and a haystack. <laughs> Red Dwarf is being devoured from within by a corrosive microorganism. Yes, it's called lust. <laughs> In two weeks' time, there'll be nothing left of the ship but a carcass. Same as Lister if I get my hands on him. As you probably know, we don't have enough craft for everyone to be rescued, so most of you will be staying behind to die. Oh, well, there's an apology about that in the internal mail. <laughs> the following names have been randomly selected for the prison roll call to join us in the rescue craft. Brown? Oh, yes! Polson? Yes! Yes! Lister? Yes! That's it. <laughs> That's it? Sorry. It's all we have room for. We could have escaped. Now look at us. If we'd done the right thing and taken the cow-hearted weasel option, we'd be circling the rotting dwarf right now, making faces at this lot through the portholes. Say, I don't want to go. I want to give my place to... Baxter. <laughs> the least I can do. We're square now. And they're a universe. 
A universe where things are diametrically opposite to this one. There, negative becomes positive, and a virus becomes an antidote. A universe of mirrors? I gotta get there! <laughs> a mirror universe, where everything's opposite. Politicians will be trusted, children will love sprouts, and rap music will be really good. <laughs> so how do we get there? You mean because we've got no form of transport apart from my old bike? Can't Crity stick some sort of gizmo to one of the wheels so he can cross dimensions when it's going downhill really fast? You're not helping. That's not my job. <laughs> Sir, we have the run of the ship. Access to all the technology on board. Creating a temporary portal could be possible. Well, best guess, about 20 minutes. My scar, it swapped sides. <laughs> and you know why? Why, sir? Because you're a shambles. What are you? A shambles, sir? Yes, that's exactly what you are. A shambles, aren't you? Yes, sir. A shambles. I like saying that word, shambles. <laughs> Remind me, what are you? A shambles, sir. I didn't quite catch that. A shambles, sir. A shambles. <laughs> Excellent. One more time. A shambles, sir. <sighs> I love this universe. <laughs> of course, it's a mirror universe. Everything's opposite. My God, <laughs> this is going to take some getting used to. I'm going to need some sort of anti-gravity harness carting this lot around all day. They said it was OK to drop by. Captain Rimmer, I am Sister Talia Garrett. <laughs> your personal spiritual advisor. <laughs> Firstly, you put your tongue in a place no man has ever been. <laughs> and then you refer to a most private part of my anatomy as lumpy, implying you have most intimate knowledge of this part of me. <laughs> Sis sister, whoever you are, thou oh, smeg. You should be back in bed. <laughs> very, very, very worried about you. Don't worry about me, uh, thing. I'm fine, thank you. How's the squirrel? <laughs> the squirrel? It's, uh, I've missed him. <laughs> my God, you're my lover. Well, it's over, you hear me? Whatever we once did with my, um, Squirrel. <laughs> it's in the past. I'm different now. Sir, I'm your first officer, sir. Squirrel's your nickname, sir. First officer? Yes, sir. <laughs> so we've never been to bed together? <laughs> Why not, sir? Excellent. <clears throat> never sleep with anyone you work with. That's my motto. Always embarrassing when you're both waiting to use the photocopying machine after you've broken up. Quite, sir. But doesn't that say science department, number one? Yes, sir. Well done. Excuse me. Nice tash. <laughs> it's gone bloody mad. <laughs> I want you to analyse this for me. Tell me what it is. <laughs> no, you 
don't want me, you want the professor. He does all those sciencey brain box type stuff. <laughs> Somebody call? <laughs> professor? Yes, Captain. Uh, perhaps you can help me. What's this? Oh, some kind of test tube, isn't it? Even I know that one. <laughs> <laughs> it's an alkali. Monovalent. The outer electron shell consists of a single electron. What's it called? Cesium francolithic mixy alibidium rixy dixy doxy dexy druxa. <laughs> you look surprised. <laughs> I never thought I'd ever hear you say that. <laughs> say what? Can you write it down for me? It may take a few minutes. I can wait. Could I have an extremely long piece of paper, my dear? Oh. The antidote. I did it! Excuse me. Yes? I wonder, could you tell me what this is? Test tube. What's inside it? Some white stuff. You're not in charge here, are you? I'm not thick, you know. I've got diplomas. I've even got a certificate that qualifies me to work in a cake shop. Hygiene proficiency. My mum keeps it on the telly. I don't have to work here. Look, I need to find out what this is. Oh, you're one of the professor then. He does all that stupid sciencey brain box type stuff. I think that's fixed it. Powering up the machine. Yes. I did it. The antidote. But, sir, that's the formula for the virus, not the antidote. <laughs> what? It's different. The formula must have changed back into its mirror opposite when you returned to our universe. So what now? Well, the machine's only calibrated for your body weight, sir. You're going to have to return to the mirror universe and memorize the formula. Memorize it? We're all dead, then. Cesium francolithic mixi alibidium rixi dixi doxy dexy droxhy. Right. Cesium. <laughs> Hang on. Cesium francolithic mixi alibidium rixi dixi doxy dexy droxhy. <laughs> Cesium francolithic mixy. <laughs> Cesium francolithic mixy alibidium rixy dixy doxy dexy droxide. Yes! <laughs> Oh, cesium francolithic mixy alibidium rixy dixy doxy dexy droxide. <laughs> You've heard of it? Cesium francolithic mixy alibidium rixy dixy doxy dexy droxide. It's really famous. <laughs> we used to use it in chemistry all the time. Cesium francolithic mixy alibidium rixy dixy doxy dexy droxide. Not to be confused with cesium francolithic mixy alibidium rixy dexy dixy doxy droxide, which is a completely different compound altogether. <laughs> now that one I've heard of. <laughs> Let's just make some up and get rid of this microbe, okay? Smart Alex. <laughs>
Up ahead, the captain and the crew. Uh, shall I program the ship to slow down so they can board? Full ahead, Mr. Crichton. I see no ships.